Hello, this is video number 20. In this video, I will talk about Newton's first law of motion and also a few other quantities that will help us understand Newton's first law. The first one of these is force. What is a force? One definition is a push or a pull. As you can see in this picture, this person is pushing on this person and therefore applying a force on this person. Also, a force is an interaction between two objects. As you can see, there has to be a person for this person to push. This person cannot push nothing. So there always has to be two objects for there to be a force between them. The unit for force is going to be the Newton after Isaac Newton. And forces are vectors. So we're going to use everything that we've learned about vectors in this section. As you can see in this picture, this person pushes to the right and this person pushes upward here. Well, what's an effect of those two forces? You probably know from experience that this person will probably go somewhere to the right here. So you can see that this is vector addition. The net result of these two forces is some kind of force going this way. So we're definitely going to be working with vectors here. The unit of one Newton is also equal to one kilograms times meters per second squared. We're going to understand this a little bit better once we get to talking about Newton's second law. And then the last note here is that a force acting on an object does not require physical contact. So I don't want you to think that just because it's a push or a pull, that means that you have to be physically touching the person. If you think about magnets and how magnets can attract or repel each other, well, they don't have to be in contact for that force to be there between them. So now we're ready to talk about Newton's first law. One way that it's written is as follows. A body at rest remains at rest, or if in motion, remains in motion at a constant velocity unless acted on by a net external force. It's a lot of words there, but basically what this is saying is that if the object's at rest, it's not gonna start moving, right? This car says, I'm not going anywhere unless something forces me to. There has to be a net force on this car for it to start moving. Likewise, this car that's already moving, I'll keep going until something stops me. The car will keep moving unless it applies the brakes or it hits something or just due to the friction from the road. So that's basically what this law is saying. Now, this demo here of the tablecloth is often done to demonstrate Newton's first law. However, it's not a perfect example. You can see this video link here that will show you a person doing this demo. There are many demos on YouTube, just Google uh, tablecloth and Newton's first law. So what happens here is that if you pull the tablecloth quickly enough, and you've probably seen magicians perform this trick, that the silverware and all the stuff on top of the table doesn't move. However, it actually does move a tiny, tiny bit. Now you can get really good at this so that you don't even notice anything moving. But really, when you are pulling this, you are applying a force on this and they will move very, very slightly. But usually this is used to demonstrate Newton's first law because these objects, they're at rest and they want to remain at rest and they barely, barely move when you pull the tablecloth from underneath them. Here's a your turn question. Suppose you're standing in the aisle of a bus that is traveling forward at a constant speed. What would probably happen if the driver suddenly slammed on the brakes? So think about this having happened to you and hopefully you realize that you're going to be falling forward. This is a good example of Newton's first law. You're moving forward, you're going to have the tendency to keep moving forward. We have to understand a couple more words here that will help us understand Newton's first law. The first one is inertia. And I like to define this as the tendency of objects to resist changes in motion, or changes is the key word. If objects are at rest, they want to stay at rest. They don't want to start moving. If they're moving, they don't want to slow down. They want to keep moving. So it actually, Newton's first law is actually also called the law of inertia because this is just what I just said is really just restating Newton's first law. So I have a picture here of an elephant and a mouse. So the elephant has a lot of inertia because it's hard to get it moving. While the mouse has very little inertia, it's very easy. You can just flick the mouse 
and it will go. So inertia is actually very closely related to this last quantity that I'd like to talk about, which is mass. You probably think of mass as the quantity of matter in an object. This anvil here made of iron has is very massive because the atoms that make it up are more massive and there's a whole bunch of them. However, you can also think of mass as a measure of the object's inertia. So the more mass that it has, the more inertia it has. The mass just gives a number to that amount of inertia. So if you this picture on the right here, if you look at it, what it's supposed to show is this person is kicking, let's say, a can of soda and maybe kicking an empty can versus a can that is full. Well, just from kicking it, you know that the one that is full is not going to go as far as the one that is empty. So that means that just by seeing how much it resists the changes in motion, the full one resists more changes in motion, it has more inertia and therefore it has more mass. The SI unit for mass is the kilogram and mass is a scalar, it does not have a direction. So that's all I have for this video, Newton's first law, which is also called Newton's law of inertia. Objects have inertia and they don't want you to change their motion, whether they're at rest or they're moving.